So for this question, we're told f of x is x minus three over x plus two. And the first thing we wanna find is the domain. So of course, the denominator cannot be zero. So x plus two can't be zero. So x cannot be negative two. So we remove negative two from our number line. And then we rewrite this in interval notation. So we can go from negative infinity to negative two round bracket union round bracket negative two to positive infinity. Remember always left to right for those intervals. Okay, the next thing it's asking me is determine f of negative one and what point on the graph is that? Okay, well, what is f of negative one? Wherever you see an x, replace it with negative one. So negative one minus three over negative one plus two. Negative one minus three is negative four. Negative one plus two is one, which equals negative four. So what point on the graph would that be? That would be negative one, negative four. Now, we should be able to see that on Desmos. So let's pull it up and see if we can identify that graph. So f of x equals x minus three over x plus two. X minus three over x plus two. And we're saying the point negative one, negative four should be on the graph. And it looks like I'm gonna land right there at negative one, negative four. So sure enough, that is a point on the graph. Right, what is the next thing it's asking us to look at? If f of x equals seven, what point on the graph corresponds to this? f of x is seven, okay. What we have here is f of x is seven. So seven is x minus three over x plus two. And from there we wanna solve for x. So we're gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by x plus two, multiply the left side by x plus two. Multiply the right side by x plus two. And you'll notice on the right side, the x plus two go away. And now we have on the left side, seven times x plus two or seven x plus, 40, plus 14 equals x minus three. So we'll subtract x, one x from both sides, seven x minus one x, six x plus 14 equals negative three. And then we'll subtract 14 from both sides. Six x is negative 17. And then we divide by six and we have x is negative 17 sixth. So the point on the graph that we would expect would be negative 17 sixth comma seven. And what is negative 17 sixths in terms of a decimal? Negative 17 sixths is about negative 2.833 approximately. So will we see that on the graph? So when y is seven, which is here, what is the x value? We're not gonna get exactly on seven, I don't think, but we get awfully close. And you can see our negative 2.83 is a pretty good guess for what the value will be there. Next, they want us to identify the x-intercept or intercepts using point form, okay? What is an x-intercept? where the graph crosses the x-axis. So let's think about that analytically first before we look at the graph. So we have f of x is x minus three over x plus two. Where something crosses the x-axis, the y value is zero. That's gonna be your idea. So an x-intercept will occur if the y value is zero. So the y value of course is f of x. So when does zero equal x minus three over x plus two? A fraction is zero if the numerator is zero. So if zero equals x minus three. So if x equals three. So I believe the point three comma zero 
is the only x-intercept. So let's take a look at the graph and see if indeed that's the case. I like point form for these things. Three zero looks good, doesn't it? Three zero looks good for our x-intercept. Now our next question is gonna be the y-intercept. Now you can look at the graph here before I switch back to the paper. You can see where the y-intercept is. So let's do our analysis to find out what that's going to be. So again, we have what? We have f of x is x minus three over x plus two. The y-intercept is where the function crosses the y-axis. And that happens when x is zero. So to find the y-intercept, all I've got to do is plug in a zero for x. Zero minus three over zero plus two, and that will be my y-intercept. So y equals negative three halves or negative 1.5. So I like point form for these intercepts. So the x value is zero and the y value is negative three halves or negative 1.5 is the y-intercept. Now a function cannot have more than one y-intercept because that would violate the vertical line test. But a function can have more than one x-intercept, that's possible. Let's go back and look at Desmos and see if we identify that y-intercept. Y-intercept is here, zero, negative one and a half, and that looks good. <laughs> 